currently in Vietnam is the UH-1B, equipped with a chemical personnel detector, or people sniffer. It can detect a completely hidden enemy patrol or troop concentration by smelling body odors or effluent. Another intelligence device being operationally used in Vietnam is a transmitter which can monitor the movements of free-ranging dogs in hostile areas. Any unusual movement by the dog is transmitted back to its handler or to an aircraft overhead for quick evaluation and action. The new railroad ambush detector now in service in Vietnam precedes a train and senses any tampering with the tracks. Among the innovations which strip the enemy of the cover of darkness are the spotlight-equipped helicopters called Fireflies, which are exposing enemy night activities to gunships. The extensive use of helicopters and the dependence on heliborne operations has been one of the truly revolutionary developments of this war. During 1967, two new army helicopters were introduced into Vietnam. The Huey Cobra is providing a greatly increased capability for armed escort of air mobile columns and close-in direct fire support for ground forces. And the Army's new Cayuse is a far superior light observation helicopter. Today in Vietnam, another operational concept is coming of age, riverine warfare. In the Mekong Delta region since the early part of 1967, U.S. forces equipped and trained to operate on rivers and canals in conjunction with air mobile and overland forces have been conducting operations which are distinctly different from normal amphibious warfare. To meet the requirements of the Riverine Afloat Force, which currently consists of one brigade of the Army's 9th Division and the Navy's River Flotilla 1, a number of specialized naval ships have been developed. Barrack ships provide headquarters and housing for an infantry battalion each. Troops are moved to contact aboard smaller armored and armed transport ships, supported by heavily plated and armed 60-foot monitors, craft which somewhat resemble their forebearers of the Civil War. A variety of smaller craft complete the Riverine fleet, including barge-mounted artillery, which accompanies the infantry, providing close, continuous supporting fires from its waterborne platforms. In the Mekong Delta of Vietnam, coordinated waterborne, foot, mechanized and heliborne forces supported by artillery, tactical air and armed helicopters are enabling us to conduct operations in areas that have been traditional state havens for the Viet Cong. Psychological operations are being accentuated in Vietnam to influence people to act in a manner favorable to Allied goals. To convince an enemy soldier to surrender, a Viet Cong sympathizer to rally to the cause of the Republic of Vietnam, a Vietnamese civilian to support his government. The number of Viet Cong and North Vietnamese soldiers and sympathizers who voluntarily come over to the government side has sharply increased. New and better equipment is being procured and used in support of the program of influencing the Vietnamese people to support their government. The Green Berets, soldiers of the U.S. Army Special Forces, have never been used with such dramatic results as have been recorded in Vietnam. In almost a hundred locations throughout South Vietnam, Special Forces teams working with Vietnamese Special Forces are training members of the Civilian Irregular Defense Group, gaining intelligence and advising province and district chiefs and training their regional and popular forces.
Serving as a bridge between military operations and the final long-term objective of building a nation free to stand by itself is the Republic of Vietnam's Revolutionary Development Program. Today, Vietnam is engaged in a twofold struggle for existence. On one hand, it is opposing communist forces of the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese regulars. On the other hand, it is carrying out a program to build a viable nation. Each of these tasks is difficult enough to perform separately, but here they both must be accomplished at the same time. All U.S. Army personnel in Vietnam are actively supporting this program, consisting of those coordinated military and civil actions to eliminate Viet Cong control over people who want to choose their own destiny. These actions must restore public security, law and order. Initiate political, social and economic development as well as expand government authority and win the willing support of the people. The Revolutionary Development Program is a key part of the nation-building process, and the U.S. Army is providing support for this Republic of Vietnam program in three major ways. First, military operations contribute to the security necessary for the Revolutionary Development Program to begin. As military forces establish the requisite level of security in an area, governmental authority can then be introduced in the form of revolutionary development worker teams, recruited from the area and specially trained. These workers help establish the local governmental administration and initiate simple social and economic projects to help win the support of the people. Revolutionary development worker strength is increasing rapidly. The second major way in which the Army supports revolutionary development is to provide advisors to the Republic of Vietnam military and civilian organizations. As Vietnamese regular forces are increasingly committed to the nation-building role, their U.S. Army advisors are likewise engaged. Army province and district advisory teams advise their counterparts, the province and district chiefs, on all aspects of military security, revolutionary development, and governmental activities. The district senior advisors in remote districts of South Vietnam have a particularly challenging and rewarding task. The third major way in which the Army assists in revolutionary development is through social and economic improvement programs. With the increase in U.S. units, there has been a step up in the number and scope of activities performed by U.S. forces. In addition to combat operations, U.S. units engage in a wide variety of civic activities ranging from simple acts of kindness to the distribution of food and clothing. to relatively ambitious con U.S. Army civil affairs companies assist in such fields as agriculture, public health, education and welfare, and refugee assistance. U.S. military surgical teams provide medical services up to major surgery. Engineer construction advisory detachments assist in such tasks as improvement of water supply systems, sewer construction, and general rural improvement. A facet of the support being provided for the civilian population is the redistribution of captured items to district officials for release to the local populace. Thousands of pounds of rice and salt were distributed, as well as large quantities of food, clothing, and medical supplies. The use of the flying crane helicopter in Vietnam has opened many possibilities for innovation in support of nation building and on the battlefield. 
This bridge span can be airlifted and installed in a fraction of the time and with far less effort than would be required using conventional bridge building techniques. 